Hello friends, welcome to administrative law lectures. In this video, we will study rule of law. Rule of law. Rule means to govern and the law means a set of accepted rules. So rule of law means to govern by law or by a set of accepted rules, not by men or rulers or kings or by nominated representatives of the people. The derivation of the phrase rule of law is from the French phrase la principe de legalite, which implies principle of legality. By this phrase, it refers to a government based on principles of law and not of men. As per rule of law, it is required that the people should be governed by the accepted rules rather than the decisions that are arbitrarily taken by the rulers. No person should be subjected to harsh or arbitrary treatment. If we go back to history, Aristotle wrote, Law should govern and those who are in power should be servant of the laws. The doctrine of rule of law is a very important concept. It is the entire basis of administrative law. It is grounded in the ideas of justice, fairness, and inclusiveness. Today, an intricate chain of fundamental ideas is incorporated in rule of law, which further encompasses equality before law, equal treatment before the law, independence of judiciary, consistency, transparency, and accountability in administrative law. According to Black's Law Dictionary, rule of law means legal principles of day-to-day -day application approved by the governing bodies or authorities and expressed in the form of logical proposition. According to Oxford Advanced Learner's Dictionary, Rule of law means the situation in which all the citizens as well as the state are ruled by the law. As per Article 13 of the Indian Constitution, rule of law means law of land. Principles or postulates of rule of law Let's discuss Dicey's views on rule of law to provide us a simpler view of doctrine that will help us build on our concept of the doctrine as we discuss it further. In 1885, Dicey developed the concept of Sir Edward Coke and propounded three principles of the rule of law. According to Dicey, for achieving supremacy of law, three principles must be followed, which are as follows. 1. Supremacy of law. 2. Equality before law. And 3. Predominance of legal spirit. Supremacy of law as opposed to the influence of arbitrary power. It means no one should be punished without the due process. Executive cannot punish anyone before they are given a chance to go through the courts of law and procedures. There should be no punishment without breach. In the modern context, there are many criticisms directed against Dicey's three pillars. The first pillar of Dicey, of there being no punishment without breach, is criticized by Sir Ivor Jennings and 
quite clearly noted where in the instance of land is acquired during war time the whole premise of a punishment not occurring without breach is completely set aside so in practice governmental officials have powers to punish someone without due process and are not scrutinized by the courts according to the second principle of dicey equality before law and equal subjection of all classes to the ordinary law of land and to be administered by the ordinary law courts this principle emphasizes everyone which included government as well irrespective of their position or rank french legal system of droit administrative was also criticized by him as there were separate tribunals for deciding the cases of state officials and the citizens separately <coughs> The second limb of Dice's theory on rule of law has also been criticized once again by Sir Ivor Jennings. There are a group of people in the state who have more rights and are immune from the law of the land. For instance, there are officials such as diplomats that are immune to the laws because of their unusual public roles judges and the ministers are also immune from certain suits therefore we cannot consider that every single person is equal before the law dice's third limb is that law of the constitution are the consequences of the rights of the individuals as defined and enforced by courts court determines the rights of the citizens dice's third limb is also criticized that there are certain historical documents like magna carta bill of rights etc which indicate that rights of the citizens are not always driven from ordinary laws of court these historical documents are the source of rights of the citizens and courts are bound to respect and follow them to conclude rule of law means no man is above law each and every one of us is accountable to rule of law and also that every person is subject to the jurisdiction of ordinary courts of law irrespective of their position and rank though there are certain exceptions that's it for today thank you for watching